Hello everyone, I know this is an awkward camera angle around my desk, but uh, the payoff's at the end. Just stay tuned. Um, this ramble is a response to a long hangout on Blair White's channel that she's since removed, but other people have mirrored. And in it, Blair White uh, and her clique of Shuan Head, Bunty, uh, Andy Worski, and uh, others towards the end like Mundane Matt and uh, Jeff Holiday and, and Memory Holiday, they really painted uh, Crazy Hair, Naomi, in, in a very bad way as if she were some kind of stalker. And I feel like they, they definitely put her in her place as being a smaller than them YouTuber and uh, especially uh, Andy Worski in a crude way saying uh, who the fuck did you think you were and uh, Bunty saying uh, you know you have to understand from their perspective he said it in a, in a nicer way but nonetheless uh, they were cementing that she was a smaller YouTuber and she had no business uh, interacting with them when they were in their private setting at VidCon Right, so they they decided to have this private get together in the middle of uh, a, a thing where fans come to see other people. I understand that they did, uh, in their minds, separate this one space uh, in Blair White's hotel room at that moment as being something just for bigger YouTubers, right? People who were famous, e-famous, you know, and they're they're dancing around uh, being painted this way. But yeah, they were being elitist. Right, and this is something that I, I've strived to to never do. Uh, if anyone wants to meet me and they're in the Denver area, all they have to do is, is send me a DM, and I don't fucking care who it is. Right, I don't care if you have one sub or a million. And so, so crazy hair goes up to this hotel room, uh, comes bearing gifts, and she's uh, a little awkward in their mind. And she gets shit on uh, as being a, a crazy creeper, creepy stalker person, you know, for basically trying to play the game. Uh, and she was doing it in her own way, uh, and being kind of innovative in it. I mean, it, at VidCon, she had passed out cards with her channel information and and numbers, and and, and some people play the game that way. But she was also playing the the YouTuber. Uh, e fame game, oh, as as far as uh, trying to collab with other people and and trying to have conversations with as many higher than her YouTubers as she could, you know. I and I have to respect that game, you know. And I have to respect the fact that she even made it to uh, Blair White's room or made it to all the different places that she did. You know, I can't fault her for uh, striving hard to to. Uh, promote herself you know that is one valid way of doing it it's not the way that I do it I might have gone in a different direction but there are some similarities that I have between uh, myself and crazy hair we both speak skeptic you know I've uh, known her for a while and I know that she is not the person that that hangout tried to paint her out to be and it, it, it's amazing how they kept saying that she was the manipulator you know that that she was being manipulative in the way that she she finally made it. I, I think that she she was just uh, very crafty in promoting herself, but it's not like she was some fucking stalker, you know. And and the way that they were uh, going about this hangout, it it, it really was telling that uh, she didn't know to be there. She she found out about it when she was being messaged for like the first thirty minutes of it. And so finally she says, hey, add me so I can defend myself. They were just going to, you know, sling mud at her for that entire hangout and just tell their side until she started tweeting, you know. It's very telling that what their intent was. It was to put someone in their place. She had no right to be in that room. And then when they find out that uh, after she gets shooed out of the room, and she hears that they're saying horrible things about her, she makes a recording, right? And th this recording has the, 
them making fun of her, calling her gypsy, whatnot. Right? I'm gonna I'm gonna say I have personal experience with having recorded people who put themselves out in a in a public place and then later will will say, Hey, I didn't mean to be recorded in that way. Um and I didn't like what I did for whatever reason. In fact, I'm going to show you guys this one. This is just my personal experience with, with one of these. I was filming at a protest where there was an open mic and, and people were uh, listed as being like public speakers that are going to speak on this event. I can't say what event because I, I would give away who this is. But I got this message from someone. I never met them in person, but I was filming this. It's, it's kind of like the panels at VidCon. I was filming this uh, protest event, and I get this message, like, a couple weeks later. Hi, Michael. I'm writing you here because I'm hoping to discuss a video you posted on YouTube. I respect and really like the work that you do from what I've seen there. And I truly appreciate it if the video of, of me could be removed. There are a number of reasons because of a job I've just gotten that my personal views cannot be shared through public media. I honestly do appreciate any help you could give me here. All right? Okay. So when when I got this message, I was like, "Okay, girl, you got on a stage where there were thousands of people and your name was announced." You know, and you knew what you were doing, and you knew that, you know, this public activism thing can come back to bite you with certain jobs where people don't like people who have uh, political opinions. You put yourself out there. You're on so many Facebook posts of, of like different events where you have spoken at, and now you're you're saying I should remove this video because you're now afraid that you might have said something that might hurt your your job prospects I mean I'm not the only person with video evidence of this I'm just you know a bigger youtuber who got a couple hundred views on this video and in the end I, I actually sided with you know what I, I like that uh, she came at me with a, a nice request um, she didn't flag me with a, a personal uh, privacy flag and you know, I respect that people need to work, so I did private the video, right? That doesn't mean that I feel that it should be destroyed, you know? There is this public record, and I have a lot of videos where people might not have felt that they were uh, doing the right things, and they're on my channel and on a couple backup channels, and I actually have it in my fucking will that when I die, it all goes public, right? And I feel like there's this uh, film nouveau that is aside from this uh, YouTuber click that Crazy Hair tried to entreat for more popularity. There's this film nouveau uh, where basically you don't have to be prepared. You don't have to, uh, you know, there, there's all sorts of impromptu styles of video making that uh, when, when Andy Worski was telling her, bitch, if you were one of us, you wouldn't record anything at all unless everybody knew and everyone was prepared. I'm like, uh, you don't go to fucking VidCon and expect to not have a fucking dozen cameras on you at any time. You know, you, that that's not the fucking place for that. And him putting her in her place and telling her, you're basically not one of our friends because you don't know the rules, and you're not one of us, and if you were one of us, you'd know the rules. I was like, holy shit. This is sad. You know? Uh, that click and many like it are just a bunch of dogs sniffing each other's asses, and they won't be the, the, the hot thing forever. Just ask Renetto, king of YouTube, how long fucking YouTube fame lasts. It's fucking fleeting. And the way that they treated her is, is going to be a stain on their souls longer than their, their internet popularity.
okay so uh back to the, the the fucking beginning of this video where i said this is a different kind of perspective uh different camera um it's not my phone you, you saw my phone it's not my webcam here's here's one of my webcams here's another one that i use for different perspectives it's not my uh camera here let me just show you this you're actually seeing me through my pen all right and there are many different uh many different circumstances where I believe it, it's very appropriate to whip out your camera, whip out your phone, uh, whip out anything and start recording, okay? I've done it to police officers, especially at protests and the Occupy movement. I've done it to city council members. I've done it to so many uh, people. And when you think that you are being wronged, whip out that fucking phone. When people have fucking already broken th that uh, contract of being a friend, fucking fine. Like, they're saying, oh, if if you were one of our, our friends, you would never have recorded anything. Bitch, you were already fucking making fun of her before the door fucking shut. Right? And then she fucking starts recording as you're fucking calling her all fu fucking sorts of shit. That's, that's just pathetic. You already fucking broke the the contract of being a friend or friendly. This is wasn't a friendly situation anymore. She fucking recorded something, and then the a good portion of the end of that uh, hangout was Blair White and Bunty trying to pressure Crazy Hair into deleting the evidence that they were horrible people. And my opinion on that is she should fucking post it. You know, they, they tried to fucking act like she was t completely, totally the creepy person when in reality they're the ones who don't want the proof to come to light. If they weren't acting that way, then the evidence would exonerate them. But they're the ones who want to hide it because they, they know that they were being dicks.